1986 tuve la oportunidad de traducir Memorias de un antisemita, una de las principales obras de Gregor von Rezori, un autor de la Bucovina, que era la parte de, eh, más oriental del imperio austrohúngaro. Es un autor extraordinario que pone en riesgo a cualquier traductor. Es un auténtico desafío tratar de estar a la altura de su lenguaje prustiano, de la riqueza y la textura de su idioma. Al hacerlo, creo que pude tratar de expandir mi propia lengua gracias a, a lo mucho que él me estaba exigiendo. Eso en sí mismo fue una recompensa, pero algunos años después recibí un mensaje de Beatrice del Monte invitándome a Santa Magdalena, el refugio para escritores que ella tiene en la Toscana. Eh, leí una pieza de Bruce Chatwin eh, sobre la famosa torre del siglo XIV donde se hospedan los escritores, vi el espacio y me pareció que era demasiado hermoso para mí. Simple y sencillamente, eh, guiado por la culpa que siempre me acompaña, sentí que yo no merecía ese paraíso. Hello, my name is Edmund White, and I'm talking about Santa Madalena, which is this wonderful writer's retreat in Tuscany, not too far from Florence. And uh, it's the invention and the home of Beatrice von Rezzori, who is one of my very best friends and whom I've known for 25 years, I suppose. And uh, anyway, it's a wonderful place for writers because during the day you're alone and can do your work. And at night you can uh, have the jolly company around dinner uh, of a of a small group of fascinating people who are constantly changing there and um uh, the uh the house uh re represents the taste and the travels and the art collections of Beatrice who really was one of the first important uh dealers of modern art of 20th century art in in Milan the quietness and then the merriment there the co contrast between the silence and the merriment are are really perfect for a writer at least this writer and uh i've been very inspired there i've done a tremendous amount of reading there and a lot of writing i remember the potted lemon tree and the great green vista ahead, which seemed to lead to the end of the world, really. There was the garden, and then there was sky, and there were birds in the sky. And I didn't yet know that the stairs leading to some mysterious place over to the right actually led to the space that would become for me the greatest place in the world to write, the greatest refuge of all, Grisha's writing studio. I didn't know all that at the time. I only knew that when I walked through the door into the outside world of Santa Magdalena, which is also somehow mysteriously the interior world of it, I felt as, oh, like a child, like a child in a book when you, maybe you are Lucy walking through the wardrobe into Narnia. Um, but that threshold place we read of in fiction where one world becomes another. Um, it really did feel like that, something so magical in the sun, the quality of the air, that sense of beauty and stillness. I somehow knew immediately that I would write better there than I had anywhere else. Most writers I know don't require very much. They need solitude, silence, and time, all the time that it takes. And Santa Madalena offers all these three crucial gifts. But it also provides something extra, which is ravishing beauty, 
Everywhere you look in Santa Maddalena, your eyes rest on beauty. And the art, the fabrics, the furniture, all of this has a kind of patina of, of being well made, well worn and well loved. And of course, all curated, bought and curated by Beatrice, who loves them in return. And I think everybody who goes to Santa Maddalena feels loved in their turn. Et, et puis enfin, à Santa Maddalena, justement, euh, il y a Béatrice qui incarne cette maison et qui l'incarne justement en tant que femme d'un haut raffinement, mais femme aussi assez sauvage, assez rugueuse et très libre. Et Béatrice, elle est comme cette maison, c'est une île, euh, elle, on peut en faire le contour, on peut la connaître, mais elle reste, mais elle reste secrète, elle reste énigmatique. Et sans doute est-ce pour ça que j'aime tant venir à Santa Maddalena. Je n'y ai jamais été résidente, mais j'ai fait quelques séjours. Et pour moi, parcourir ce chemin, refaire ce chemin jusqu'à jusqu ce jardin, jusqu'à cette maison et jusqu'à Béatrice, euh, c'est important. Euh, ça, scande, ça scande les années. Euh, c'est un rendez-vous. Euh, que je veux euh, maintenir, euh, voilà, un, un rendez-vous euh, de travail, mais aussi un rendez-vous euh, d'amitié. Indeed, the house itself, James would have, I think, appreciated the house itself with its own many associations with the fact that the house itself, and even though it had been sort of rebuilt, that the, in the many years that Beatrice had been there, she had decorated the house with things that mattered to her. Each object sort of carried a memory. And so as you walked through the house, and the house, of course, the configuration is a mystery at the beginning because any house with two staircases is always a mystery as to where, where anybody is. People can leave the house without you knowing there's another door there. How exactly did so-and-so get out to that position? And so um, I began um, in that house um, to write the novel, which became The Master. And certainly some of the tone of that house and being there at that time made its way into that book, which, as I say, I began in the spring of 1999 in Santa Maddalena. Santa Maddalena is a place you cannot describe with words. It is something sensorial. When you are there, you both feel that you are in another world and you also feel that there are no places like this in other parts of this planet. Something of unicity and exceptionality arises in your feelings. What you experience there, you are not going to experience it in another place. In Santa Maddalena, you feel that time is completely different. A day is very short and very long at the same time. In one week, you think that you have spent your whole life there and the opportunity to work expands itself. This is thanks, of course, uh, to the way everyone treats you in Santa Maddalena, as if it was your home. Life gets another perspective because silence enters inside you and you get surrounded only by literature. It was such a joy to be invited to be a fellow at Santa Maddalena. And after being there for a while, I very soon realized that Beatrice had created a community where rigor, excellence, love of words, literature, storytelling, and contradiction, playfulness, uh, community, loyalty to friendship were all very important. And also, of course, the freedom to write which for all writers is so important. And I was very fortunate to share the tower with uh, Michael Cunningham, and we had really great times together. And it was there that I wrote the first draft of the first draft of my novel, Gun Love. And I remember one time with Michael 
it was one evening and we were talking and I brought up that, that quote from Ecclesiastes that um, there's really nothing new under the sun. And I remember both of us thinking that actually at Santa Madalena, everything was new under the sun. I just hit the ground running and I know this is a little far-fetched, but I swear there has been so much brilliant work done there. So much love from Beatrice that the molecules of the air at Santa Maddalena are differently agitated, that you breathe in oxygen there that imbues you with a sense that creativity, that writing is possible, inevitable, and urgent. I've never had that experience anywhere else, and I don't expect to have it anywhere else ever again. I discovered, you know, within a day or two, what what everyone who is lucky enough to be invited to Santa Maddalena discovers, which is, uh, it's not just a foundation or a fellowship, it's a community. Um, it's true that at Santa Maddalena, you're given the greatest gifts of time and space to write uh, in you know the most beautiful settings and most tranquil settings imaginable. And I can't think of a place where I've written uh, more happily or more productively, but the great gift of of Santa Maddalena is uh, the community. It's the conversations that you have with the other writers, um, with the foundation's founder, Beatrice, over the dinner table. Um, you know, there you meet writers from all over the world, from all different backgrounds, all different ages, and you're exposed to ways of thinking and to um, books and literature that, that you, wouldn't, you wouldn't normally be exposed to. And it's in that dialogue between, you know, world cultures and between uh, ages and, you know, over the generations that I think something new and, and um, almost magical happens. You know, it's, it's this sort of cross-pollination of ideas and of, of literature uh, that just occurs naturally at the dinner table there. Um, of all the writers at Santa Madalena, I have a, a particular difference, which is that I not only was a fellow there, but I also was a director at Santa Madalena, which gave me a great look from the other side of things, um, of seeing the writers, not just my own struggles, but seeing them struggle and learning how to help, which was often by offering to bring them to Florence to see the art, because if I saw they were having trouble and getting frustrated, I realized they had not been to the Uffizi. And often writers, I would send them alone, and they would come back by the train totally changed with a, a, a new idea. And often those paintings would go into their work, which was very gratifying. Yeah, it's solitude, but it's an inhabited solitude. You know that there are people around, you know that Come lunchtime, you'll be able to go down and talk to people. And then come dinner time, you'll be able to go down and talk to people and have a wonderful meal and drink a glass of wine. These are very important things. I mean, writers are very simple creatures. You know, we don't do much. We sit in a room. This is why, you know, you've never seen a good movie, a really good novel about a writer, because we don't do anything. What would you film? My dog stands in front of me when I'm working. I can see him looking at me and saying, what is he doing? Why is he just sitting there, making these strange marks on the page? Why isn't he out walking with me? And I understand his, his puzzlement. I mean, I'm puzzled as well. Because I, at least once a day, I look up from my work and I say, what am I doing here? <laughs> making up these stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. These, these, these transcendent, illuminated lies. I mean, why, why am I doing it? And I still haven't found the answer. My path crossed with Santa Madalena's in 2017, an emotionally tumultuous year for me. I felt lost in the great forest of life. 
and I was looking for a refuge. When Beatrice led me through the woods and invited me to the tower, I wasn't aware of how substantially my life was about to change. You know about Hans Castro and his experience in Thomas Mann's Magic Mountain. That sense of incremental entanglement with a space that gradually becomes a metonym of the world in all its beauty and madness, in its reservoirs of historical knowledge and potential for a calmer future. Now I'm writing about my experience in Santa Madalena, and I've devoted half a decade of my life to pondering how that journey from Santa Elero train station to Santa Madalena launched this subtle transformation, which reminded me of the power of literature. Beatrice is the greatest bookworm I know, and in our friendship, I relearned why we fall in love with words and books and those who make them, and why we become writers in the first place. It's it's a place I, I go to in my dreams. It's a place that I talk to uh, people about a lot. Um, that's more than I should, because really, unless you've been there, uh, how can you understand? But, um, and you get work done. You do get work done. And that's, uh, that's it, it's that lovely balance between all the kind of the uh, you know all the social stuff, uh, all the just the, the fun, the uh, the splashing about in the pool, the uh, uh, the wine, the um, the storytelling, and and long hours in these extraordinary rooms. The one I'm looking at on the cover here is the is the of course the bedroom upstairs in the tower, the top of the tower. Um, which uh, is uh, where I was last time with the, with the sort of candy striped wallpaper, and uh, and yeah, I did I did like to work at that just the, at that very square table in that very square room um, with the uh, the light ahead of you and the light also coming from the side, uh, a wonderful place uh, to work and to draw. I did a lot of drawing there last time I was there. The animals I've known many over the years. Um, I knew the pug Alice, who a lot of the first writers knew, um, and I've seen them come and go, of course. Um, my favorite was Julietta. When I was working as a director, Julietta was a stray who, as Beatrice often said, only liked women and only indoors. And so if you were outdoors, you could not get anywhere close, especially as a man. But she and, and she looked like me. She had red hair. She was a kind of hound um, with long red hair. And she became my friend. She would come every morning. She would scratch at the door of Grisha's studio. And I would let her in and she would sleep by my feet the entire day. And I felt so honored. Vous voyez dans la façon dont on peut répartir les gens, il y a les, je sais pas, les, les gens qui aiment le thé, les gens qui aiment le café, les gens qui aiment les douches, les gens qui aiment les bains, il y a les gens qui sont plutôt chiens, plutôt chats, et, euh, et moi je suis plutôt chien, j'aime bien l'espèce de, de, de candeur un peu bête des chiens plutôt que la, la, la subtilité des dénieuses des chats, et en même temps j'ai jamais eu de chien, j'y connais rien en chien, et ce chien s'est approché de moi, j'ai fait ce qui me semblait ce qu'on devait faire en principe avec un chien. J'ai un peu flatté le cou du chien qui m'a léché la main. Et là, les deux personnes qui étaient au fond de la pièce se sont approchées. C'était Béatrice et Max Rabineau, qui est devenu ensuite un, un très cher ami. Et Béatrice a dit, c'est extraordinaire, Julietta t'a adopté. Elle me disait, mais Julietta, euh, Julietta n'aime pas les hommes. Euh, et normalement, elle, elle ne s'approche pas comme ça. Elle s'est approchée de toi, elle t'a léché la main, ça veut dire que tu es un homme bien. Et c'est ainsi que j'ai été adoubé par Julietta et, euh, au fond, euh, introduit 
dans la sympathie et même l'amitié de Béatrice. What I liked from the very beginning was this also this sense in a way of being away and of disappearing place really and I would travel different countries in this short span uh, of a small area even walking by different rooms you know you had all the world around you or a replica somehow uh, but the place maybe I'm most attached to is the kitchen because there was a change of atmosphere all the time you could easily forget about everything while outside and you walked in that kitchen and then you were forced to learn again in a way the, the I wouldn't say the rules of civilization but even the essence of civilization through conversation which happens a lot uh, in Santa Maddalena. One of the moments of the day that I remember best was the few minutes before being called a table. Minutes I used to spend in the billiards room, which is also one of the libraries, looking at the books that my colleagues had written in Santa Madalena. Those books gave me a kind of hope. They were a kind of promise. After lunch, I used to walk around uh, Grisha's pyramid, from there to the pool and back after an hour perhaps of reading in the pavilion and then going back to work, hoping all the time that something about my difficult book would become clear. Until one day, while I waited in the billiards room, I began thinking about the billiards rooms that I had known myself in downtown Bogota, places in which I spent more time than I should confess to while trying to avoid my law studies. One thing led to another, and soon I was placing my characters in those billiards clubs, and I was ready to write the first scene of the novel. With Beatrice's authorization, or complicity, I went up to Grisha's desk and wrote the first page. It's hard not to become superstitious after that. <laughs> 